have to stay. Um, <laughs> I hope everyone's well uh, wherever wherever you are in the world. Okay, here we go. Ready, everybody? Tuck in, uh, and uh, and I, I will I will start this, and then I'll, I'll answer some. Sorry, my connection got wonky. Um, yes, uh, stay on if you want to uh, talk a little bit. Again. So this will take about 10 minutes. I timed it a little bit earlier. Okay, ready? Chapter 26. George heard the rain fall throughout the restless night, a soft, absent-minded rain that would bathe his garden and feed it and not pummel it into the ground. Sorry guys, I feel like I keep losing connection. I don't know if you're experiencing that, but I'll, I'll keep reading. He couldn't sleep and found the sound of the rain soothing. At some point, he must have slept though, because he opened his eyes and the night was gone and the rain too. And through his curtained windows, some sunlight was filtering in. He got dressed and went to the back door. He put his gnarled hand around the worn round, the worn round knob and looked fixedly at the door not seeing its yellow paint, slightly greasy from six months accumulation of grime, not able to move, trying hard not to let the moment overwhelm him. Then he turned the knob, pushed the door open, and walked out for the last time into his garden. He saw the clouds were fleeing quickly. Those too close to the sun were shriveling into nothing, burning away, and soon the sky would be quite clear again. George stood on his still damp grass and watched steam rise from the garden. He touched the marigolds and stroked the petals of the roses and laid his cheek against a hydrangea blossom and cut a big bunch of sweet peas and wished he could pick a zucchini, but there weren't any yet. He spent considerable time outdoors, inspecting, admiring, approving. He was aware of stirrings and rustlings, fragrances, glorious splashes of color. He heard birds arguing in the arbutus tree and noticed a new influx of aphids on the roses and saw that the tide had left new driftwood on his beach. He didn't know how to say goodbye to his garden or to tell it that he had loved it. He went back into his kitchen, put the sweet peas in water and made himself some coffee. He got a notepad and a pen from his desk in the den, a room he had used scarcely at all since Myra's death and sat down in his leather chair with his coffee to make a list. He had a lot to do today. It took him half an hour to make the list. As soon as it was complete, he looked at the first item, library books. He would work his way down from the top. That was the sensible way of doing things. Wilcox here. She was ridiculously relieved to hear his voice, even though it was curiously dry and remote. Mr. Wilcox, it's Cassandra. I'm calling to check up on you. I, I hope you don't mind. How's your chest? Did you sleep well? Are you feeling better today? She got it all out in a rush and waited anxiously for him to reply. Cassandra? He sounded amazed. Where are you calling me from? The library? Yes. How are you? May I come to see you? I was worried about you yesterday. I'd like to make sure that you're all right. You were... The first thing on my list, he said. It must be an omen. There are some books I have to return, you see. The only thing is I don't think I'm going to... I don't think I'm up to making the walk. Then I'll come by and get them, said Cassandra. All right? May I come? Sure. Cassandra drove to his house, preoccupied and uneasy. When he opened the door, she looked at him intently. He appeared calm and looked back at her steadily. He was tidily dressed and his hair was combed and he smelled of fresh coffee. She relaxed somewhat and smiled, but he didn't smile back. He led her into the kitchen and insisted she sit in the leather chair. The library books, the two mysteries, and the Mozart biography were in a neat pile on the footstool. He poured coffee, fussed with sugar and milk, and finally settled in a straight back chair opposite her. I got you here under false pretenses, Cassandra, which until lately hasn't been my nature. You mean the books? But I was going to come anyway. 
He got up stiffly and picked up from the kitchen counter the crystal pitcher, which was overflowing with sweet peas. I want you to take these with you when you go, he said, and the pitcher too. I can't take the pitcher, Mr. Wilcox, but I'll take the flowers with pleasure. I want you to have the pitcher, he sat down again. It's important to me. It was my sister who gave it to me for our wedding, for Myra and my wedding. He put his hand on her arm, impatiently shaking his head. Please don't argue with me, Cassandra. I'm trying to get my life in order here. I need your help for that, and in exchange, I want to give you something. He looked at her slyly. I'm getting rid of everything. I could have offered you my house or my car. She spluttered, horrified. See, he said, grinning at her. You're getting off lightly. Will you take it? She hesitated and watched her, his smile disappear. Yes, all right, I'll take it. It's beautiful, and of course I'll take it, if you want me to. He let go of her arm and sat back. I'm moving away, going to live with my daughter, Carol, in Vancouver. He frowned and reached for a notepad, which lay on the footstool next to the library books. He took a pen from his shirt pocket and laboriously added something to his lengthy list. Haven't told her yet, he muttered. Better give her a call. But when, said Cassandra, when are you going? George put the pen back in his pocket, but he held onto the pad as though it might occur to him to write something else there. Tomorrow, he said. Tomorrow, said Cassandra, incredulous. That's why I had to get these books back to you today, you see. Tomorrow? But why? You, you mean forever. You're never coming back. He shook his head. But why? I thought you were happy here. What about your garden? What about the hospital? What about me? Her voice had risen and tears were pushing at the backs of her eyes. I was happy here said George, taking no notice of her distress. For a long time. And then Carlisle arrived. And then Myra died, and now I'm not happy anymore. He glanced through the window. What about my garden? That depends on who moves in here, I guess. He turned back to her. As for the hospital, there are lots of people who can do what I do there. It's just half a day a week. I that. You could do it yourself if you wanted to. Do you think you'll be happier in Vancouver? It was a question she knew she shouldn't have asked. I doubt it. He leaned toward her, his hands grasping his knees. The thing I can't stand the thought of. That's the whole thing of it, in a nutshell. He sat back. But isn't your wife... He sat unmoving for a moment. His eyes were dry. Yes, she is. I could get up and leave right now, thought Cassandra. I could get up gracefully and kiss him on the cheek and take the pitcher and the sweet peas and the library books and warmly wish him well and just leave. Walk right out to my car and drive away and he wouldn't think less of me for doing it either. They were silent for what seemed to Cassandra a very long time. And in that whole time, she never took her eyes from his face. even though he's dead now. Because I killed him, said George. Cassandra felt very strange. She heard herself breathing. Patiently, and finally realized to change his mind or tell her he'd been joking, but looking at him, at his face, the cold color of cement, 
At his brown eyes looking steadily back at her, she knew that he had told her the truth. It's a bad thing I'm doing now, I know it, said George. I'm using up all our friendship, grown so slow and strong, right now, in this single moment. That I'm letting you do it, said Cassandra, numbly. I'm not asking you to keep this a secret, he said. I don't care if you tell anybody or not, or who it is you tell. But I had to say it to somebody, and I knew I'd only be able to say it once. And you're the only person came to my mind. Why did you do it? She said after a minute. Maybe it goes too far back. I thought it was because of Audrey, my sister. He closed his eyes and rubbed his temples, but it turns out it's more complicated than that. I didn't have any idea when I did it how complicated it was going to turn out to be. He looked at her and tried to smile. It's all bound up in responsibility, you see. It's a good thing in the main responsibility. But I have a feeling now that you can carry it too far or get it. all wrong and he squeezed his eyes tight shut fiercely rejecting the comfort of tears ah uh, he said a little later you'd think by the time a man gets to my age he'd have accumulated some wisdom around him wouldn't you he looked out and Andrew stood up quickly he struggled to his feet. She put her arms around him and held him close to her, his thick white hair pressed against the curve of her chin. She looked over his shoulder through the window to his garden, glowing exuberant and abundant against the backdrop of the sea and the summer sky. She had no tears for him, but she held him to her with a fierce protectiveness, patting his back and saying into his ear murmured things meant to be soothing. And that is the end of the chapter. Um, I hope that you guys got all that. Those of you who stuck around for all of it on the Instagram discussion area, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts about maybe he's so good and so capable and he um he uh <laughs> yes there is laggy internet i'm sorry um he he's just an incredible person and and i got a lot out of just talking to him and the scenes were wonderful and he was so um he was so invested in making sure that the kind of connection between cassandra and george was was strong and i and i really appreciated that Yes, I am an admirer of Sally Rooney's writing. I haven't read her new book yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm curious if anyone else has. Uh, it sounds like it's amazing, but I, yeah, I, I do. I love her fiercely. George was friend zoned. George was, George was a friend. <laughs> um, yeah, I felt for him too. I felt like it was such a comp. Complicated. Um, my internet seems a little bit bad, but um, yeah, I, I felt terribly for him. Asking <laughs> me, yes, he's a phenomenal actor. He really, really, really is. Um, okay, is there a Street Fighter series? I wouldn't be in that. I think I have officially outgrown Street Fighter. Wait, let me see if this light is making me annoyed.